In the extreme north of the Canadian province of Saskatchewan, we visit a uranium mine by the name of Points North Landing in this tale. This region experiences a continental climate, therefore the winters are extremely cold and the summers are scorching hot. The north of this province is sparsely populated, and those who do live here work in the mining, wood, or energy industries, because the majority of this province's human population resides in the south. And there you can also find animals like caribou, moose, and black bears. But the ones that you should be aware of are the wolves. Canadian citizen Kenton Joel Carnegie, 22, is a student at the University of Waterloo from Waterloo, Ontario. He was completing an internship at the uranium mine surfacing facility, which was around 350 kilometers from La Range, the location of his geological engineering studies. On November 8, 2005, at around 5.30 p.m., Kenton made the decision to take a stroll around the camp's perimeter. Although he needed permission and was cautioned about traveling alone, he wasn't easily deterred because he occasionally enjoyed a little adventure. His first error was to forget that wanderlust isn't necessarily a good thing. He promised to return by supper time, which was at 7 o'clock, to a co-worker. He left the structures behind as dusk set and crossed the large field outside of town. He was about a kilometer from camp, meandering along the edge of a lake. He crunched to the edge of a looming tree line because it looked appealing. The majority of the trees in the area are black spruce, which are smaller than larger trees, but thicker and more closely spaced. You can't see very far in front due to the trees blocking your view, which happens to make these trees an ideal predator camouflage. As he got closer to the tree line, he raised his head and saw a spectator. Only a few meters in front of him, a wolf was facing him broadside. Kenton had seen wolves in the area, and they were not friendly, despite the fact that the wolf seemed indifferent. Black bears and wolves frequented the camp waste to dump in the area, and both species were aggressive and unafraid of people. On occasion, they would approach people while snarling and bellowing like animals accustomed to receiving food from the humans. Kenton made the decision to not try his luck, and he turned around to get back to camp. But as he was about to turn around, he saw a second wolf appear over his back track. Between this wolf and the shortest path back to camp, he was trapped. His anxiety was rising. He was unaware of the wolf's pursuit of him ever since he had left the camp. While one hid behind the trees, the other followed in his footsteps while being pursued by a bloodhound. Kenton had unknowingly wandered into an ambush. As night fell, Kenton grew more and more eager to get back to the safety of his camp. Panicked, he had made the worst choice he could have. He chose to run. His second error was to flee without having any plans. He could have gotten a somewhat different result if he had just given this part some attention. So, he made an effort to sprint around that wolf that stood between him and the camp, making his way back through the trees. As he attempted to dash back to camp, two other wolves, one from each side of him, joined the two already pursuing them. Because they know the animal would defend itself and hurt them if it sees them, apex predators stay away from animals that are staring at them. Particularly, wolves like to flush their victims by squeezing in on the weak spot of the prey animal's back. Same strategy was implemented with Kenton. Just a few meters into the chase, his strides lengthened to manage the snow as quickly as possible, and the wolves had closed in on him, biting into his thigh. Blood started to spray the snow as the wolves tore at his flesh as he rolled on the ground to avoid their vicious jaws. Kenton kicked and yelled as he tried to escape the pack as it surrounded him. One of the wolves bit his calf muscle of his right leg, and another one had bit his right hand. Before being caught and hauled to the ground a second time, he managed to escape and to run a few more meters. The wolves were charging in for assault on his legs and everything that they could sink their teeth into. He kicked, he struck, he roared at them. His blood accumulated on the snow below him as he struggled with them. Kenton managed to escape a third time. He dashed a few meters closer to the camp before being caught again. He was terrified and he believed that his only option was to fight for his life. After kicking and stomping at the wolves, Kenton was hit in the back and he fell into the snow. Another would charge him from behind and attack him from his blind side as he turned to tackle the first wolf. His blood continued to collect and flow into the snow. 
Kenton released his hold once more, hoping to escape the now irate wolf pack. They quickly overcame him once more, and the adrenaline rush had left him out of breath and worn out. A wolf had bit his nose, tearing the tissue and causing him unimaginable pain all over his body. He was currently covered in significant bite marks on his hands, his arms, his face, his legs. No matter which way he moved, he was continually being assaulted from behind. His blood covered the snow and greenery beneath him. As he steadily stood with his feet apart, he turned to kick one of the wolves, but lost his balance. He fell to the ground. When he stopped moving, all four wolves charged him. They started biting and tearing at his body. The two errors he committed that night sealed his fate. By the time that supper arrived, Kenton's camp colleagues had realized he didn't come back. At 7.30, they packed into a camp pickup truck and they headed down to the lake to search for him. The men discovered wolf tracks when they got to the beach and they returned to the camp to retrieve a gun. The men found Kenton's remains nearby when they got back to the lake and they used a flashlight to find them. It wasn't surrounded by wolves, but there were wolf footprints all around it. The haphazard rescue team could hear wolves howling in the background. And as they returned to the location of Kenton's death to begin loading his remains, they could make out a pair of eyes sparkling in the shadows. The majority of the track evidence was destroyed during the search and recovery efforts, which led into an investigation. Kenton sustained mortal wounds in a predatory attack, but the coroner refrained from calling it a wolf attack because nobody had witnessed it. Since they had not been seen in the region for more than a month, black bears were probably hibernating at this time. Mountain lions and coyotes were not known to frequent the area and hadn't been seen there. So it seems like wolves were the remaining culprits. The jury agreed after hearing the prosecution's argument from the authorities that Kenton died as a result of a wolf attack. Even though Kenton's passing was a terrible tragedy, experts advised that there wasn't a need to panic over one's passing. In his memory, Kenton's parents created a memorial scholarship at Waterloo University and expressed worry that authorities were ignoring more important policy matters. They said that the wolf pack's reliance on human food sources had been neglected by the camp's biologists, which led to their loss of respect for people. The camp's garbage dump was surrounded by an electric fence to keep the wolves and the bears out. And a few years later, a young man was attacked by a lone wolf while taking a break outside of camp just a hundred meters away. Authorities commanded the killing of nearby wolves and the construction of food disposal equipment at the camp in order to stop further luring. Prior to Carnegie's passing, there had only ever been one documented instance of a deadly wolf attack in all of North America. Kenton's passing was tragic. If he'd made some wiser choices, it might have been averted. Like carrying a gun when you go out. Although what's transpired cannot be changed, we have taken steps to prevent a repeat of the situation. It's not common for wolves to hunt humans, but if you are going to an area where there could be wild animals, then you need to take the necessary precautions. The best thing that you can do is go in a group. If you go alone, then you're an easy target. Also, carry arms with you in case of an emergency, and also use them. By doing a few simple things, you can save your life in the wild.